Breaking news I was just talking about in Kiev. Tear gas has been used during clashes in the Ukrainian capital after rioters attacked a police bus which was blocking their way. Activists and opposition leaders have gathered to push for the government to step down over a new law they say is in breach of the constitution. Let's get some more from Ukrainian journalist Andrei Bashtovoy. He's uh, just witnessed the latest events there. Um, Andrei, hi, I hope you can hear me there. While I'm speaking to you, we'll be showing some pictures, latest pictures from the scene as well. You were at the rally there. Did you see how how and why it turned violent. Uh, hey, uh, I want to say that uh, after this uh, Sunday traditional uh, people protest uh, started the violent, violent scenario. So 200 meters from me, when, uh, two hours ago, the uh, people uh, who wanted to come to the governmental building and to Verkhovna Rada, so Ukrainian parliament building, uh, they were stopped by police uh, and small group of radicals. So, so, so small group, groups of right radicals members, uh, so the, it's not the political uh, radicals, but uh, some people who are uh, aggressive and they, they started to uh, fight against the police. Uh, they started uh, throwing the uh, pyrotechnics to them and uh, the police answered them and they started the clashes. Uh, so the clashes are happening now, even now, so the, it, it uh, then stopped. Uh, even this second. Uh, so Did I want to say that uh, these people are trying to, to break into the parliamental buildings, but uh, it's too violent. And uh, some of protest members of Euromaidan uh, are not supporting them. And there are a lot of discussions on the Europejska Square now. So there are some people who uh, support violence and some people who don't. Andre, uh, have you seen any uh, injured people there at all? Uh, I'm sorry, can you say it one more time? Have you seen any people uh, injured there at all this afternoon? Uh, yeah, I saw these people, so the, uh, the, there is a lot of medic, me, medicals around the European sphere. They are tr trying to help to uh, somebody because uh, the policemen used the gas and after that a lot of people had problems with health now and they need the medical support. And I know that some of poli uh, policemen also has uh, some problems. One of the police uh, special force members uh, were uh, beaten by uh, the radicals and and after that, uh, he was put into the uh, Euromaidan, so 200 meters uh, there beside me, and the medicals are helping him. Andre, you talked about uh, radical hardline elements there. Who are they and uh, how many of them are there? So uh, the, uh, on Europejska Square now there are some thousand people, but only a hundred of them are these right radicals who are fighting against the police. All other people are just standing and watching at this. Uh, so uh, these people are not supported by all the political parties and uh, a few seconds ago the uh, leaders of Ukrainian opposition said that they don't support the, uh, all the radicals, uh, radical and violent things which are happening now in Kiev and they need only the peaceful scenario and they, are not, they can't support these people. And these right radicals, uh, so they are not controlled by politicians. It's like an alternative uh, right radical movement in Ukraine and some uh, experts say Think that this, these people are controlled by Ukrainian special forces. All right, Andrei Bashtovoy, the Ukrainian journalist. Thanks for the update. Much appreciated. Well, let's talk now to our correspondent Rina Galushka. Um, just uh, fresh back from uh, Ukraine, not too long ago, in fact, as well yourself. Um, from the scenes you've been seeing playing out today, I guess they were sparked by this new law uh, or latest in a series of laws That's that, right. uh, that, that, that yes. was signed on Thursday. Are you surprised by what's happened there today, though? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, no, because. Um, it, it looked, it either had to, uh, I would say, burst into flame earlier, right when they started back in November, mm. or it got to the point where they have to do something. And by they, I mean the protesters, and of course the, uh, the government as well, but mostly the protesters. Uh, because for a while there, they tried to, you know, keep it coming in waves. They were waiting for the dispersal of the Maidan. They kept saying it's going to happen. People uh, kept getting messages through their phones and through Twitter, uh, every, uh, threatening messages, which mm. were essentially saying we're about to be ambushed, the, the police are about to attack us, there's going to be, you know, essentially all hell breaking loose, and it never happened. So I think it got to the point where they just had 
to to have done something. If you well, look at the what was the particular catalyst today, I wonder for this. Well, well, you know, today it's it's really. I mean, I wasn't particularly there today, but from what I've seen, from what I've observed, it's probably uh, it's really quite safe to say that we probably had several hundred of these ultra nationalist. Uh, um, Act, not even activists, protests, and there's plenty of them hanging out mm. at the Maidan at the European well, What are they the trying European to get out of this, then? Uh, you know, honestly, if I were to speak from a personal point of view, I would say this is exactly what they wanted, the, the mayhem. Uh, not even publicity so much. It's uh, it's basic, basically a collection of young men mm. uh, who are violently determined to not even bring attention to themselves. They feed on the on the chaos and the mayhem and the and the confrontations with police. And and once they get to these confrontations, they can be very violent. I mean they have they have nice sticks. They're prepared to be attacked. We're hearing yes. and the opposition very much distancing themselves from that. Absolutely. But of course there are ordinary as, citizens caught up in this as well. As a matter of fact there were reports that I uh, read, read on Twitter from some of the journalists who were tweeting and they said that for a while there it looked like Klitschko was actually about to come to blows with the people who mm. have actually started burning the bus. And it, at one point, they tried to direct the bus. Somebody got into the bus and tried to direct them at this the, the police. police bus you're talking about. Yes, yeah, and yeah. if we go back to uh, back to November, December, uh, they, there was already an incident when they they tried to run a bulldozer into the police as well. Mm. So this is sort of a repeat of what we saw back then, just a month ago, essentially. But it does look a lot. It does look a lot severe. Of course, it's it's much more colorful now and. Uh, Goodness knows how long this is going to go for. Rewinding the clock there, mm -hmm. uh, take us back very briefly to how all this started. Back back in the day, basically mm. it was about the fact that uh, Yanukovych failed, uh, or rather I would say he pulled out at the very last moment from signing a, a trade agreement with the European Union. But everybody in Ukraine seemed, to, or a lot of people, I shouldn't say everybody, no. There were a lot of people, especially in the western part of Ukraine, which always tries to associate itself with Europe. Mm. Uh, though there were people who were saying, hey, this was our essentially first step into the European Union and now mm. we are robbed of the chance, which essentially wasn't the case, but let's not delve into that. Uh, and afterwards, so basically the first protests were about against the whole pulling away from European Union. Mm. But now they're completely different. Now it's against the government. Now they're protesting. Now they're saying this is a revolution and we want the government to step down. Um, the protesters are, are, are particularly unhappy about a, a set of new uh, restrictions that were signed in late last week, aren't they? Tell us about Absolutely, those. yes. There's a, there are several laws uh, which uh, sound very complicated, but essentially what they do is they give more power to the judges, they protect the judges, they also uh, essentially um, cut down on uh, people's right to uh, protest on Maidan. So people, a lot of people on the Maidan saw that uh, as a sort of a, an attempt to squash the protest. Mm. Let's just go to these uh, latest live pictures now. We'll take them full frame, I think. Uh, hopefully we've got... Uh, if you'll stay with me for a second, Marina. Of course, Marina. yes. Yeah, let's go full frame to those pictures. Um, I think we're getting a feed uh, from the square there now, I'm told. Uh, it looks like, looks like a mobile phone uh, picture, but it, that's the latest live scene there. Can you just... Uh, you've been there yourself, I mm -hmm. haven't. Can you just uh, take us through what we're looking at there? Which, which um, particular area? It's a bit hard to see. I yes, it's see. actually... It's right in the centre of the city. This is essentially the... Uh, uh, this is exactly where the protests happened. It's right near the Euromaidan, but it's one street away, essentially. It's right around the corner from the hotel that where we were staying. And uh, generally, um, that's, where, uh, uh, that's where the police used to um, sort of get together and protect. The Rada is right there, the, the mm -hmm. Ukrainian <laughs> parliament. So there were a lot of buses which were essentially cordoning off the Rada and protecting it from the protesters. Should the protests turn violent, but they actually weren't that violent for quite a while. Um, I do not believe if Is Yanukovych are... likely to be swayed by any of this, you think? At this stage, I mean, an agreement's been now signed with uh, Russia, but that doesn't preclude um, future relations with the Absolutely West either, not. does it? No. Um, I... At this point, we can, we can assume that pro he has to do something, obviously. Mm. Uh, but... Uh... He also needs to talk, to think about. Uh, he also needs to think about the consequences. Obviously, of course, I am no political uh, analyst, but at this point, it does look like there's there's a really high chance that we could be seeing early elections because mm. uh, there is very little chance that this is going to just uh, end peacefully now, mm. especially after what we've been seeing today. Vitaly Klitschko, he's um, uh, very f uh, been uh, foremost in a lot of this. That's well, he's the darling boy exactly. of the Ukrainian what uprising. What are his chances yes. for the future there, politically? Um, you know, from what I've been obs observing, it does look like he is the favorite of the people who are on the Maidan, mm. and of course, of the many European officials 
who were there and were shaking hands with him and meeting with him and basically he is the darling of mm. the Ukrainian uh, protests and of those who support the Ukrainian protests. But at this point, especially as of earlier today, um, again from what I was reading, people are actually on on the who are protesting on the uh, independence square in Kiev. Mm. At this point, they're unhappy even with Klitschko because look at this: is we are, we are into second, we're over mm -hmm. the second month of protests, mm. and they cannot agree on anything. Mm. They decided not even to uh, bring out a, um, a unified uh, candidate should the elections take place. And a lot of people, I think, were really upset by that, which shows that essentially there's three of them, three leaders of the protest, and uh, they cannot even come together and they cannot agree on the fact who is going to be the leader. And that's what people were chanting earlier today. They were they were shouting leader, leader, because that's exactly what they need, and they don't see that. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk, very little action. Arena, thanks for the insight there. Nice to see you in the studio here uh, tonight. No doubt you'll be out covering uh, much more of this uh, in the very near future as well, by the looks of it. Arena Galushka, our correspondent there. OK, well, Artis Alexei Ryzhevsky has also covered uh, last year's protests in Ukraine. He's following the turmoil in Kiev right now, and uh, you can follow him on Twitter, of course. Follow him for the most dramatic pictures.